This is seriously like the awesomest thing ever, and it's about to get more awesome. Um, <laughs> which is the better chair? I want to give her the better chair. You guys are going to help me, right? I know that you all have been waiting your entire West Wing lives to actually say the thing to the divine Kim Webster, who's going to be here in a second. You all want to say it with me, so at the count of three, we're going to say the thing, OK? All together. One, two, three. Ginger, get the popcorn! interest of equal time, I felt that we should be bringing the popcorn to you. Finally. So. Finally. But that looks like it's diet, and I don't do diet food. <laughs> it's good, though. Oh, okay. It's got extra salt. Oh, so that salty. Help. That might help. Right? So salty helps. and spicy. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I just said, I'm like, wait a minute. No, seriously, guys, this is like the first West Wing con, like, oh ever. Oh, my God. <laughs> And so Do when you I have whiskey, <laughs> yeah. are we using this these microphones? I don't know. Can you hear us? Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't think we need to be all like with them up in our face, but they're, you know, here. Yeah. Okay. They help for the video. Oh, oh they okay. Help. Okay. Hi, everyone in video land. So. But these things are getting tight. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll we'll just thing and just casually lean up like <laughs> like this. Does that work? I think, honestly, I think honestly, they can yeah. probably hear you. Just leave it okay. and project. OK. <laughs> so cool. Is this insane for you? Is, th is this insane for you? Like yes. Uh, I mean, the show has been off the air for over a decade. <laughs> I was not expecting to get a call about the West Wing and say, can you come to a thing? I thought that that ship had sailed. So I am thrilled to be here. Uh, my family's like, what? <laughs> People want to see you? I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's going to show up, but you did. Thank you. See mom and dad? <laughs> you have to like tweet pictures or something. Yeah, right? my nine-year-old nephew is like, are you famous? I'm like, well, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't know. <laughs> You did that, you know, you came out of hiding to do the, the podcast, right? To do yes. The with the boys? Yes, with uh, Josh Molina's podcast, I did that. I had to watch an episode for the first time since the show had finished, <laughs> which was disturbing because you don't really realize how much you've aged until you see it on television. Thank uh. you, Netflix, <laughs> for the complex. Um, and also, it was tough because... Now I would have been making other choices, I think, as an actor. So seeing that is like, oh, what an idiot, you know? <laughs> oh, youth. Hmm. You, you were how old? No, oh, let's not get into that. Yeah. Skip next. <laughs> but I mean, like, you, you were, you were wee. You were I like was a, wee. I was like 10. Yeah. You were like a, a, a wee baby, and there you yeah. are, you know, swimming alongside big, scary, intimidating people. Yeah, <laughs> and that was my first professional acting job. I don't know if you guys have heard the the podcast where I talk about my my weird experience, weird in the coolest sense of the word, but um, should I tell that story? Does anyone want to hear it? Okay. <laughs> That's a solid yes. Yeah. Can I have one of those water? One of those waters? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Go. Uh, so, I was, I had just joined SAG two weeks before um, on St. Patrick's Day in 1999. 
April 1st, I, I had gotten this call for a job on April 1st at, to be a stand-in on this TV pilot. And I took the job, but I had just joined SAG, and I thought I was a professional now. You know, I had studied Shakespeare in college, and I thought, like, I was a pro, and I shouldn't be doing extra work. So I'm driving to downtown LA to the pantry where it's the, well, it turns out, it's the West Wing, spoiler alert. Uh, and it was that scene between Josh and Mandy. Um, remember Mandy? No. <laughs> whatever I mean, happened. Whatever <laughs> happened to Mandy. Um, so I was standing in as one of the college girls and sitting there while they're having their banter. And uh, within like two hours of being there, I makes me emotional every time. I knew I was meant to be there. Like the weirdest, like your dead family coming back, like we like planned this for you kind of thing. Like you just know like you're meant to be there and it's like all these years later and I still like, whoa. <laughs> so during the day, Aaron thanked me for doing such a good job and I'm thinking, uh, I'm just standing here, sitting, actually, and not saying anything. I don't know how hard that is for some people, <laughs> but I was able to manage to do that. And so that, that was April 1st, 1999. <laughs> April Fool's joke was on me, I guess. Uh, yeah. And then the show gets picked up, and so they invited me back to be a regular staffer extra in the background. And I don't know who I was standing in for, but uh, there was a scene, it was episode three, and it was a scene between Josh and Toby in the hallway. And so I went to the restroom, I was on a break. And I go outside of the, uh, the Warner Brothers stage and I go to the bathroom and an assistant director comes running outside, grabs me and he's like, hurry up, get back inside, get back inside. And I'm like, what? It's two guys. Like, I'm not standing in for Richard Schiff or Brad Whitford. Like, hello. Uh, and so they, they're pushing me in, and I'm seeing Aaron talk to these guys about this scene. Sorry, like, I was emotional before. Now it's making my face melt. Uh, so I am being pushed in to the scene, and I'm like, there's Aaron Sorkin. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> and I'm, like, trying to fight to get back out, and I hear... Aaron say, and this is where, oh, tissues. What an assistant. <laughs> and this is where Kim will come in and say, estimated BDA. And I was like, huh? This Kim? And so I get whisked off to hair and makeup. I felt like I was Miss America. Uh, it was like the best day of my life. And so we did that scene. So then maybe like a week later, uh, there was the cast read through for episode five, Crackpots and These Women. And it was the first time we were gonna see Zoe, but Elizabeth Moss, the boss nowadays, right? Couldn't be there that day because she was probably filming something else because she's pretty good. So Aaron asked me if I could come to the read through and read her part. Okay, well one, for an extra to be invited to that kind of situation. I almost threw up on his shoes right there. <laughs> uh, cold reading, not my forte. I was like, oh, this is going to end really badly. And so he hands me a script, and I try to hide in the back of the room. And I'm trying to like look, flip through and find like the part so I could read it real quick, but I can't. And Aaron's like, get up here, get up here. So then, there's no chairs left, and I have to sit between him and Tommy Schlamme. Oh. <laughs> Across from John Wells, Rob Lowe, Martin Sheen, Al Sajani. I'm like, okay. I may die. Okay. At this point, or, you just have to like laugh. There's got to be something surreal about it. Like, no, <laughs> I knew like this was like the biggest break or make of my life. Like this is it. Like you don't get these chances. Yeah. Like this is unheard of. So, but I was pretty sure I was gonna throw up. So I, I knew, all I knew was it was Martin's daughter. She was a teenager in college. So I was like, what was I like in college with my parents? It wasn't good. 
So I make some choices and I choose a character in like that quick. It was definitely not what Elizabeth Moss did. It was a sassy, salty, Jersey girl college student. <laughs> And so I read it with some attitude. Um, but I think the first line, and remember, I'm like 20. I wasn't much of a cook back then. The first line was, Dad, you never put enough cumin in the chili. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> in my head, I read something else. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud. But I read, Dad, you never put enough cum in the chili. <laughs> that would have been the end of that story, and I wouldn't be here right now, I guarantee it, because I told Aaron Sorkin that story years later, and he wasn't amused. Oh, dear. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of actresses did that in the actual audition. So there, again, like, guardian angel or something, I don't, human, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know any, I didn't barely know what chili was. <laughs> So from there, I just, I don't know what I did. I blacked out, quite frankly. And after it was over, the cast, Tommy Shlami, Aaron, coming up to me, and they're like, who the hell are you? Like, you're that extra. How did you do that? And I was like, what'd I do? So I everyone was, <laughs> yeah, everyone was congratulating me and just seemed really impressed, which I was like, what is happening? <laughs> um, but like for days after, everyone was like really nice about it. So I, I don't, then every week, like Aaron would have a new script and I would read somebody else. Like I read The Hooker. Uh, I read, I don't know who, I can't remember who else I read. But I, now, in retrospect, that must have been my audition process on the DL. You know, they may have seen something in me and were like, okay, we'll give this girl a shot, but like, let's just pretend, you know, that we're, that she's just reading. I don't know. I really still don't know. But, uh, so yeah, then Ginger became a thing. And before you know it, you have, you're getting lines about porn and stuff. Yes. Feminism. Yes. <laughs> so clearly some of the Jersey sass, you know, yes. lingered and, a bit. And in New Jersey, we encourage it, which was a line later on. So, um, yeah, Aaron definitely did love to pull from real life. You know, the porn was ob obviously a dig at Rob, uh, which I, I really... That's right, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I had to call my parents and warn them about that line. <laughs> um, but that was my favorite line on the show. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, saying that to Rob Lowe is pretty... I was a little worried, to be honest. I was like, I don't know how he's going to take this, but he has such a good sense of humor, so... Okay. You know, it's not like you wrote it. <laughs> I know, but I felt guilty saying it for some reason. I'm like, I'm doing what I'm told. I know. <laughs> I was so, uh, so young and na naive. So you did like all Shakespeare-y things? Were you a theater major? Yes, in, I was a college? theater major in college. I went to West Virginia University, which was the number one party school at the time. And <laughs> in high school, that's kind of what I studied. Uh, the partying or the Shakespeare? The partying, <laughs> not the Shakespeare. Oh, okay. I, had, I had no idea what acting even was in high school. So I got a 0 0.8 my freshman year. And my parents weren't even going to let me go away to school. So I was at a party the night before the, the report cards came home. And some girl that I went to school was just like, did you get your grades? And I was like, no. Wow. So I woke up early the next morning, ran to the mailbox, got them before my rents did. They didn't find out for like 10 years. <laughs> True story. Uh, so I was like, I have to come up with a plan. So I went back to school and I was like, let's let's take an acting class, something to get my grades up. So I took an acting class, fell in love by my fifth year, because you know, 0 0.8. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by my fifth year, I was full scholarship and I graduated with honors, so. Thank you, you everybody. Girl. And my parents were so proud. <laughs> Until they found out I almost failed out. Yeah, but then you, you know, it's all about wanting to be there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wanted to be there, just not in class. Ah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Shakespeare? Um, God, it's been so long that um, 
I barely even remember him. We went to high school together. Uh, I forget. In the dark ages. It's a lot of beer. Me and Kavanaugh both really like our beer. <laughs> Sorry, too soon? <laughs> okay, good, thanks. It's gotten to the point where it's like, if I'm not going to laugh, yeah. I'll cry. So yes. might as well laugh. And I've already cried today, so it's time to laugh. Might as well laugh. So, okay, so fast forward, and it's now. And um, and it seems to me like now you, you work on the other, you're a producer guy now. Or girl, or yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes you know a guy. It's a West Wing habit. I, I think, uh, where I just got in a Toby calls everybody, I'm, you're all my guys. You're yeah. my guys. And I'm like, yeah. Well, so I, I mean, that's I'm, what made it gender neutral in my head. So. Oh, I'm <laughs> um, yeah, I'm totally teasing about that. So... Nine years ago today, I lost everything in a fire. So happy anniversary to me. Mazel tov. <laughs> Yay. So I had, got, had nothing except for the clothes on my back. Oh, my God. Uh, it was pretty traumatic. I'm not going to cry about that again because I've already done that once today. Uh, and so I had to come up with a plan, like, real quick. I couldn't go to auditions. I had nothing. Um, Gene Simmons from KISS and his wife adopted me on via Twitter because Marley Matlin tweeted about oh it God. and they didn't even know me and they took me into their home and I lived with them for a couple months. <laughs> you know, when Marley Matlin has your back. <laughs> What's that? And it didn't become a TV show? Uh, no, I mean... I watched they were doing their show at that point, and there was a couple times that I was on it, and it was just really pretty surreal. And I lived in the west wing of their house, because their house is so big. Like, I was two miles away from them. They had no idea I was even there. Um, so, yeah, so I lost everything, and I really needed to work pretty quick. So I had a friend who was the executive producer of Celebrity Rehab, <laughs> <laughs> and so I called him and begged him if, to be a PA on a show. And that's how it all began. And then I realized I really, I love being on set. I love telling stories, clearly. Uh, and I don't have to, like, lose my privacy, which is, I think I already said this, yeah. it's really weird. It's Because you don't know if people are looking at you because... They recognize you, or you went to high school with them, or you have something on your face, yeah. you know, like, you just don't know. Like, I still, to this day, I'm like, what? And because I'm from New Jersey, I'm a little spicy, and I'm like, what? You looking at? Like, yeah. <laughs> Tough guy. Uh, so it just seemed to be a pretty natural fit, and so the first show that I was an associate producer on what is a show called Born This Way, which is on A&E. It's a sh show about young adults with Down syndrome. And it's groundbreaking and amazing. And we've won Emmys for it. And if you haven't seen it, I suggest you check it out because you'll fall in love. Um, so yeah, so now I'm doing some other shows for MTV. And it's, it's pretty cool. I'm traveling internationally. I, just got back from six weeks in Greece, in Mykonos. Uh, I was in South Africa for two months this year. Oh, wow. I leave in two weeks for another mystery country. They won't tell me yet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> they won't tell us until, like, a week before. It's so, like, confidential. So, but it'll be out of the country somewhere. I mean, I say this as an ignorant actor person who has no concept of what your job is. What is your job? What yeah, what does a producer do? Not a clue. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what's that? That's development. <laughs> what's that? What show? It's development. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we just do everything. We're just... I, I still, like my parents ask me what I do. I, I don't know. This is a lot of yelling. You know, a lot of you over there, you film that, you know. Did you see the movie Wag the Dog? I haven't. Okay, well, Dustin Hoffman plays a producer, and he spends the entire movie screaming about, yeah, nobody knows what I do. You know, there isn't an Academy Award for, I don't get the credit. I don't get, yeah, nobody knows no what producers do. Including us. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It, it's, it's just a lot of grunt work, 
Um, sort of whatever needs doing. Directing cameras, I direct cameras. Um, it's weird because it depends on the show. It depends if it's a documentary or if it's a house reality show. It's uh, it's it's interesting. <laughs> it's no West Wing. <laughs> well, I don't think anything is the West Wing truly. So listen, I could do this all the entire time, but I want to share her with you guys. Okay. So if somebody's got questions, let me see hands. I saw a hand. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I'm pretty sure that people are more willing to hire me because they're like, huh? <laughs> they're like, they just think I'm a really old person on the come up. But when they find out that, you know, I was an actor on one of arguably one of the greatest shows of all time, they're like, they're like, OK. And they're like, you don't act like an actor. Think it, like I guess everyone thinks I'm gonna be a diva and I'm gonna be like, but I'm I'm not like that. This well. is how we roll in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot of yelling, but it's all out of love. <laughs> yes. Um. So you're talking about how Western was like your first real gig and that kind of stuff. So what would you say is the most valuable lesson you learned from your experience on the show? Never. Never not take an opportunity. You never know where it's going to go. If most actors would never do what I did, most actors can never do what I did because it's just not possible. You just don't know where. It's the like discovery story. I got discovered. It wasn't on a bus stop or whatever. And if I didn't have the training, then you know, I'm pretty sure that was going to be the end of the story. Luckily, like, I had studied it in college, so it was being in the right place at the right time, preparation plus opportunity. Uh, yeah, so I would say take all the opportunities you can and go with your gut, you know, always go with your gut. Yes? Okay. You've heard a lot about the possibility of a West Wing reboot, so I'm assuming we're all lucky enough that that happened, and they invite you back. What are your uh, I'm hoping it's porn. <laughs> that was good. That was and good. <laughs> wow. I impressed myself with that one. <laughs> Woo! I still got it. Um, Set it up. Knock it down. Yeah. You know, I, yes, I would, I would come porn? out of, a, no. Porn. <laughs> no, my dad's a Catholic deacon. That's definitely no. Uh, I... I would definitely do the West Wing if they if they call. There's no way that I. What am I too good for that now? Like <laughs> they gave me that opportunity. Of course, I would go back. I mean, I do act occasionally if it's like you know a project that's kind of small and I like the script and it speaks to me. Then I'll do that, but I don't pursue it anymore. Um, it just takes too much time. It's too. Uh, soul breaking. Yeah. It's really it's yeah. a, it's kind of a tough business, and so, but if they invited me back, absolutely, <laughs> I would go back. But I don't know what Ginger would be doing. I kind of, you know, I I'm hearing that. I'm only hearing what you guys are hearing. I have no inside information. So <laughs> if they are doing a reboot, spoiler alert, I don't think I'm going to be asked back because no one's talked to me about it. But I, you know, I hear that they want to like maybe have like Sterling Brown as the yeah. president, and I don't know if we bring it back. Don't you guys want to see the the people that you fell in love with originally? Like, isn't so maybe have some new people in there? But that whole presidency term of you know four years really got us. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. Um... Obviously, you were kind of thrust in this, like, CJ phone off a cliff or something like that. Um, I'm curious, as you went along, what your process was with your character. I mean, obviously, she's in the background and used, you know, when uh, Aaron creates a script for you. But at the same time, you're an actress and you're trained and so forth. And anybody that's read any book on, on being an actor talks about 
okay, create the backstory yeah. for the character. Yeah. Can you talk to that? Did you? What did you do to try and infuse Ginger with as much personality as you could to make her who she was? Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's tough. Like when you get like one line here and there, and it's like, well, well you know, like. And if you're like starting to make choices and then Aaron throws you a curveball, like you're, you know, not that. And you're like, oh, so then you have to work around that. So I would just, you know, take little cues from the script, either pull from my own life, pull from other people's lives about some, you know, choices around background and stuff. And I remember vividly like picturing my life, my apartment, like when landing him you know, or like when the president got shot, like where I was and what I was doing and like coming back to the office and what I was wearing before I, like I remember doing all that homework for like, what, two lines and a hug, you know, like, but yeah, you have to create all this internal life or else it's just gonna be flat, you know, like, the cheese Danish, boysenberry Danish, like that's a thing. I don't even like cheese Danishes. I would rather a boysenberry Danish, but you know, like then you have to create a story about that in your head. And so there's just like a lot of voices going on up there, you know, it's like, a lot of make believe. Did you have to like keep that all to yourself? Cause I, I remember hearing Melina talking on the podcast about how Aaron's not into that. About how, like some 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 actor in I don't know something of his goes up to him and says you know do you want to I've, I've decided what my character's favorite joke is do you want to know what it is and he's like I didn't write that so no yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so you definitely kept your stories to yourself and like what you've created because then he would throw you probably a curveball yeah. on purpose <laughs> you know and so I didn't need that <laughs> I was just treading water to keep up with all those phenomenal actors as it was, you know? It was so out of my league. Woo! Other places? Oh. Are you over there? When you're doing the show, you're getting small parts of it, and you're kind of seeing it fragmented and things like that. As West Wing has continued over time, going to Netflix, kind of continued to grow, here we are 20 years later or whatever. Oh! You get to... <laughs> <laughs> Give her a second. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Just throw Whoa. that out there, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ow. Ow. I didn't even know I was that old. Okay, go on. Watch the show through the lens of somebody who's seen the whole story and like that. Kind of like the 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 picture that we got to see was the the finished product where you got to see how it would made. So I'm guessing closer to you had more memories of how it got made and things like that. Now that you're more removed. Are you able to watch The West Wing as a viewer now more than an actress? I have not watched The West Wing since it originally aired, except for, I think, two... Oh, someone gasped. Uh, I think except for, like, two episodes. One was to do Melina's podcast, so I, had to, I didn't know what the drop-in was. I forgot, like, what I even did in it, so I had to watch that. And I was... I think I said earlier, I was pretty much appalled at, like, how old I've gotten and how, what my choices were as an actor. So no, I couldn't watch it as a viewer. I was, I, like I probably beat myself up. I'm still probably beat myself up over it. So I don't know if it's good for your psyche to go back and like watch, especially so far removed. Like I probably should have done it, you know, maybe two years later, not two zero. <laughs> huh? Oh, well, thank you so much. I just feel like now I could have done so much better. Wow. What is a favorite story of working with Richard? Yes. This is, I, I think I've told this story like four times today. It's definitely my favorite. So in Excelsius Deo, which I think he won the Emmy for, we were filming, there's a scene where I tell him the DC police are on the phone for him. And I catch him as he's going into the Roosevelt room with CJ and Sam. It was at least the 18th or 19th hour of that day. We have been there for that long that day. And Richard, who is a lot like Toby in the sense he's very, he's a serious guy. He's, you know, has a better sense of humor than Toby, but he's pretty serious. Had the giggles <laughs> so 
bad. We did that scene dozens of times, and he was like a schoolgirl. He would look at like one of us and just be in a fit of giggles. Like, and this is my third episode, and I'm thinking like this is my fault. Like I'm in big trouble. Like I was scared. I'm like now I'm gonna get fired because he just keeps giggling and like no one's seen this before. Like he would look at it at Rob and just be like, like to the point he was crying laughing. <laughs> And we're all like, what? What is so funny? There was nothing happening. It was just we were so punchy. So that is for sure like my favorite Richard story. Oh my God. Because can you imagine him giggling like a schoolgirl? Like, let's take that in for a second. It was amazing. <laughs> Else? Come on. Yeah. Um, so in a, I'm in a completely different setting than acting, but I can definitely relate to being kind of thrust into something unexpectedly and feeling out of your league and everyone being older and smarter and wiser and better at their job than you are. Mm -hmm. So just how did you navigate that and what advice would you give to people in similar situations? <sighs> Buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> that would be my, I mean... Find a way to ground, you know, ground yourself. Uh, know, like I knew full well what I was involved with. I knew like this was the big time and I would just study everybody and study what the professionals were doing and just try to rise to their level instead of them having to drop down to mine because you don't ever want to be that person. So when you're surrounded by greatness, you become greater. So I, you know, I would just say soak it up, enjoy it, just work your butt off, and uh, do the damn thing, and know that you're worthy. Over there. Hi, um, I lost everything in a house fire three months ago. <gasps> and oh. Yeah, it's so traumatic, so traumatic. But, and I can't believe I'm really even saying this, but everything does happen for a reason, and I see the reason now. Like, but it took a long time for me to get to, I mean, I'm, I'll be rebuilding for the rest of my life. All my West Wing scripts, all my Emmy dresses, everything I owned gone or smoke, water damage, just destroyed. Uh, know that it does get better. There will be a time where you can laugh and joke about it, which it's not going to be for a while. <laughs> but, you know, it's, i so sorry. Yeah, that's like really, really tough. But just stay the course. If, if you could sue the pants off of somebody, I recommend it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, what you you have to stay humble. You're gonna have to be really humble. You're gonna have to ask for help, and not be afraid to do that. Um, you're going to find that maybe your path wasn't the one that you thought it was gonna be, and so you have to be open to new possibilities and new opportunities. Like I was talking about earlier, that was kind of part of what I was thinking, like you just, everything changes after that. And so you just have to be open and go with the flow, like, and just see where the waters take you. If there's something else in life that you wanted to do or try, now would be a time to do it. Uh, maybe this is a shakeup that you needed in your life that you didn't, couldn't figure out on your own it's tough. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Goodness, yeah. And when you go back and you watch 
early episodes, I think, at least for me, I realized some of the language in how the men spoke to the women, especially the assistants, wasn't the way that we would expect them to do it today. So I was wondering if, and, and there was, you know, it's not that new. I mean, there were people talking about those kinds of things during that time as well. So I'm just wondering if you realized that, or did people talk about any of that, or? I don't remember that ever being a conversation or anything. I mean, I still to this day am all hail Aaron Sorkin, you know, and so, and I think most of us that worked on the show felt the same way and felt that if he put that those words down on paper, that he had a reason for it, and maybe it was to show what really is going on in real life and show it as a mirror. I don't remember any kind of conversations. I never remember felt feeling like degraded or anything like that. Um, but also, you know, it was 20 years ago. And so I barely remember what I had for lunch yesterday. Actually, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, that scene with Ainsley and the stiletto feminism, feminism. is like really one of my favorite things really? ever. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's Lost, really. Which I don't remember that her one. Name was Rena, oh, oh yeah, who the hell is Rena, and why is she yeah, like take? Who the hell was she? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a well, question I get. Oh, some like scrub or something. Yeah, yeah. What do they call yeah. them? Yeah, yeah, that was. I got a lot of questions about like who the hell is Rena. A lot. <laughs> I still don't know. Scab. Scab. That's what I meant. Yeah, I said yeah. scrub. Oh, uh, Claire had something before, yeah. Bringing the tone down completely, was it ever distracting working with someone as hot as Robin Owens? <laughs> 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 yes! <laughs> because... You missed the part where she was talking about the porn. So. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you came in late for that. Uh, when I was in high school, Rob Lowe was the Bieber or whatever of the day, the or yep. he's, he was the guy. I had the St. Elmo's Fire poster on my wall. Oh my in high school, I would say, oh, I'm going to marry him one day. <laughs> OK, not quite, but I did play his assistant on TV, which I will take. Uh, so yeah, like that first day, I was like, I remember the first April 1st was a Thursday. The next day was like that Friday before Easter. And I remember seeing that he was going to be on the call sheet on Tuesday. And I was like, oh, God, please just let me make it till Tuesday so I can see him in real life. <laughs> He's even better looking in person. It's just gross. It's just, <laughs> just not fair. And he doesn't like age. Ugh. He's one of those people that just took all the good DNA. Yeah, it's rude. Yeah. It's just rude. Yeah. And he's like funny and smart. There's got to be something wrong. <laughs> I'm going to just assume that he has really bad breath in the morning. OK, you know, yeah. Well, something, just... you know. Yeah, over here. Um, since we're talking about reasons and everything, how do you think the, if, say, we, in another universe, West Wing takes place after Trump, what do you think the difference between everything would be? What do you think some of the major differences would be? Trump, boy, I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think, yeah, I think Aaron Sorkin would have a field day. I think that would maybe be the reason what would get Aaron back to write that show is this clown show right now. Yeah, it's like uh, someone that I know from college was like, oh, if you're in D.C., you know, come visit me. I work at Trump Tower. And I was like, hard no. <laughs> <laughs> Blocked. Yeah, like, so. done. <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> know your audience, you know? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I just think that Aaron would, like, if there was a time to reboot it, it would be probably now, you know? Like, so that he could have a... Yeah, so you could have a field day. But let me say that because of Trump, you all are watching that show a lot again because I got a residual check, and I want to thank you and you and you 
Thank you. That's why I got the popcorn. It's on me. For the first while, though, we were talking about this um, in a panel, a couple of panels ago. For the first while, though, I don't know about you guys, I couldn't watch it. Like, after he got elected, I couldn't watch The West Wing. It hurt too much. Oh. And, oh. and then, like, after a month or so, I went, you know what? I'm ready to hide again. Yeah. <laughs> let me hide in the niceness. Let me, let me yeah. see if I can Rebel recapture a sense of idealism. Yeah. 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 Kind of, yeah, yeah. I um, wanted to know if you could share some stories of the personalities of the various actors. Like, for example, Melina's well known for being the practical joker. I was wondering if you might uh, reveal that you were a victim, if you were, or you know, things of that nature. Joker. I cannot like, reveal. No. That kind of actor stuff uh, that shares their personalities and things. Melina was definitely the prankster, and him and Brad had a, uh, oh, they still do. If you they're follow them on it. Twitter, <laughs> I sometimes can't tell if they're joking or not. <laughs> I really can't. I, I have no idea. Uh, it seems like they hate each other, but I'm not, I don't recall, because um, it was, well, that was only 15. <laughs> um, like I said, Rob was very charming, very funny, very smart. Um, Allison is everything and more. Oh, Queen. that woman, yeah, like, <laughs> she won so many awards that I would feel so bad because she had to do so much press that I would bring a martini out to her on the red carpet <laughs> every time because, like, it became her thing because it happened a lot. <laughs> because she was always winning. She is just really amazing. Um, Richard, a lot like Toby in the seriousness, but has a real wicked sense of humor. Um, everyone was so phenomenal. Uh, Landingham, oh, R.I.P. That chick was a piece of work. So. <laughs> All of us assistants went to the Emmys one, one night together. We were all in a limo together. I'm and entering pink ladies' jackets. Yeah, it just <laughs> felt, it felt like a lot. Yeah, it was all of us and Ed and Larry, I think. And so then the limo, after the show, of course we won. You know, then the limo was dropping us all off at the end of the night, and we were all exhausted. Landingham wanted to party. <laughs> And she was pissed that we didn't. Pissed, like went off. She, I mean, her story, if you don't know her story, like she didn't get really into acting until like her 60s. And then ended up winning all these Emmys. And uh, I remember sitting around for that table read when Landingham gets killed. And I remember no one knew except for her and Sorkin, pretty much, I guess. None of the cast knew, and I remember everyone in the room, like, sucked the air out. We couldn't believe it. Everybody loves Landingham. So that was a real heartbreaker. She was, she was a piece of work. Julia Hill said of that table read that, like, he couldn't bring himself to say the words. Yeah. Because he, it was his line to yeah. say that she was, and he's like, if I just sit here and don't turn the page, it won't be true. <laughs> yeah, it was like, like we didn't get the script until we were in the room, like no one had it before. And that was the usual, like it wasn't like we really got them ahead of time because Aaron's writing all these himself pretty much, you know? So he needed every last minute, I'm sure. Um, yeah, he, that, was, that was one of those moments where everyone was just in shock. Dulé, uh, has the best laugh in the world. Um, you know, we were all like, his episode, his first episode was my first episode, so, um, oh, I just loved, love working with him. He was still like, that kid does not stop. He works nonstop, and I'm so proud of him. It's amazing. And his tap dancing all the time, all the time on set. It was such a joy. Do you have a John Spencer story? Oh. Brace yourselves, guys. <laughs> well, John Spencer, also from New Jersey. We encouraged each other. Uh, like, he was so gruff, but had, like, this huge heart. 
and we just got each other because we were both from New Jersey, so we just both got like the brashness. Um, you know, such a professional, but such a kind, kind person. Getting that news was terrible. Went to his funeral in New Jersey. I think it was on Christmas Eve. I flew home for it. It was, that changed everything. It was like, well, let's wrap up the show now. It felt like, you know, like that was, that was a shock. That was a shock. My favorite post Sorkin episode is is Requiem. Yeah. Because it's just that that it it wasn't even watching the characters with the grieving process. No. It was watching That was real life. You guys and it was helping I think it was helping the, the audience too. Yeah. And, oh, and President Bartlett's game face. Just the whole, oh. like, oh, God. He, you know, when he comes out and he's like, come on, love, let's make it a party. Let's put some music on. Yeah. And he's always trying to cheer people up. Oh. And he's more heartbroken than anybody. Yeah, yeah. And Martin, the kindest person in the world, really. He will never remember your name, but he will <laughs> introduce himself to you every single day. Um, so over, like, Thanksgiving, you know, a lot of us were you know, holiday orphans where we wouldn't go home. And he would rent a bingo bus for all the extras, the crew, anyone who was in town. And we would take that bus to Vegas. He would put us up in rooms. He would take us to shows. Oh we would play bingo on that bus for like $1,000 a pop. And we would play it like all the way there and all the way back. Like, it was crazy. I remember getting off that bus with 1,500 bucks, like in bingo money. Um, he, like, I got really sick towards uh, the last couple of years of the West Wing. I had fibromyalgia, and I was pretty much Ooh. bedridden. Yeah. And he was like my West Coast dad, like, wanted to get me a, a nurse at home. He was, like, looking at treatments for me all the time. Him and Janet, his wife, are just, really like so the opposite of what you would think Hollywood is. He is the best. So there was, in addition to President Bartlett's MS, there was another invisible illness in the in that White House yeah. that we didn't know about. Yeah, nobody knew. I mean, I didn't, but like really try not to tell many people, but it was pretty obvious to the people like that I was working with that there was something really wrong. Yeah, but that's awful. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm fine now. But you're Ish. a tough cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Tough cookie. Here. What's next? Okay. <laughs> What's next? We got one over there. Yes. Uh, favorite with Rob would definitely be talking about porn with Rob Lowe. Um, um, he would sometimes whisper things in my ear to really screw me up, and it, and it would work all the time. If you ever saw me like bright red, it was probably because Rob was just whispering something in my ear, uh, just to get me off my game, and it would work. Uh, like what? I don't remember, but I remember like being always bright red. Okay. Um, <laughs> He was just, he was super fun to work with. Um, you know, just growing up, loving his movies. It just, like, <laughs> I felt like I was a teenager there. I was always probably, always probably blushing in his presence because he's, he's semi-good looking. A little bit. A little bit. Um, and what was the other one, just in general? Uh, I do, I remember uh, uh, The Hug with Richard, I really loved doing. There, um, Tommy Shalmi had directed that episode, and I had done the homework that, you know, like I was really like gutted by, by that and really scared by it, so Tommy let me do the homework that I did, and I was like, cr like bawling my eyes out, and so he was like, that's that was great, but let me, let's try it this way. And then we did it his way in the episode. But I heard him talk about me in the podcast of that episode and say, like, I think he used the B word, and I don't mean bitch. I think he said, like, it was brilliant. 
and I really need to get that as like my ringtone. <laughs> because, whoa, like, yeah, I had really done, but he was able to pull me back, which is, you would want to be pulled back instead yeah. of not being able to go far enough, so. Um, that was awesome. Any, any of the walk and talks with Rob were always fun um, about, you know, Margaret being the encyclopedia that we use. <laughs> Margaret, Nic Nicole Robinson, ugh, that one, hilarious. Um, I'm sorry that she won't be here. I haven't talked to her in years. At least you guys will get to see um, Bonnie, or Bonisha, as I call her. <laughs> uh, and, Ed, well, Ed, Ed, or is it Larry? Uh, Larry? Yeah, Ed won't make it, but Larry will, so that'll be fun. I haven't seen them in a long time. <laughs> I'll stop saying years, because it's really giving me an ulcer. Oh, yeah. Do you keep in touch with anyone? I, I keep in touch, like, a little bit over social media, but all of us have, you know, our jobs, I mean, our minimum 12 hours a day, and it's just hard to keep in touch with your families, let alone, like, you know, so it's tough. So just pretty much on social media. I haven't seen anyone since, well, I don't even know when. It's been a long time. It's sad. I have to know, Aaron Sorkin's such a musical theater nerd, you know? It, like, pervades all of his shows, and especially in the West Wing, they're quoting Gilbert and Sullivan all the freaking time. Do you have a favorite musical? I hate musicals. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's because okay. who in the world goes through life singing and dancing their way through life? That's not real life. <laughs> I haven't seen any of you do it today. You lie, you lie, you lie. I, uh, I'm from New Jersey. We don't encourage that. <laughs> you know? You're commutable. You can afford a tunnel ticket and go nah. in the subway. <laughs> mm. What's that? Oh, um, one time. Uh, does that count as a musical? I don't even know voice? if that counts as a musical. Is it? A jukebox I mean, musical. it's music, but is it? Oh, they did? Yeah. Uh, see, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hands back there. It's fine. Oh. Oh, thank you. Oh no, come on, it's my this is my pleasure. This is great for my ego, by the way. Thank you. Well listen, feed her ego further when you're doing autographs and photos tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. tomorrow. Go visit. Katie, what time am I doing that? Two? Okay. <laughs> And I mean, I can't think of a better way, we are at time, I can't think of a better way to end than, you know, this gentleman. So can we please applaud our asses off for this uh, stop. <laughs> uh, Thank you guys so much. And I will obviously be doing the panel tomorrow. So if you have any further questions, I'm sure you're sick of me already. I'm, I can't believe we filled an hour. Keep those residual checks. Yes, please. <laughs> You were the group that got the popcorn, though. She's not bringing any more popcorn. Yeah, I, I'm sold out on the popcorn.